check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome to Backstage with Angelo. In this new episode, I have someone special that I want you guys to know a little bit more about because I'm pretty sure that you guys have seen a lot of her. Of her. Um, but today we have her with us answering questions, but not pretty much like questions. She's going to talk about herself, right? She is, um, she's been doing modeling and pageants for over 10 years now, and she has competed in all massive Canadian pageant systems. She has represented Canada four times internationally. Yes, you heard correctly, four times, that's quite a lot. Uh, and she's also, she found the formula to get her days to last 26 hours, and she's probably going to tell me that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Miss Earth Canada 2019, Matea Henderson. Well, thank you for having me. How are you? It's an honor. I'm fine, fine. I'm very happy to, to have you here. Um, probably first time uh, in, in, in such a really yeah. long time. And um, yeah, we were basically talking about the weather. And um, imagine, guys, like I'm living in Calgary where everything is cold and snow. And um, Matea is in Vancouver. When she told me that, I was like, okay, we're not doing the interview anymore. No, we're not. I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, been, it's been nice days over there, Matea. Oh my gosh, it's been beautiful. I think like I didn't realize how much rain actually happens in Vancouver, but we get like the most beautiful sunny days once a week. And I just think I'm so happy I'm not in the snow. I was in the snow for way too long and I'm not built for the cold anymore. I'm never leaving unless it's like a family emergency. That's my new plan. Exactly. And you were telling me that when your mom called you and you told her you were in Vancouver, she just hung up on you. Well, the thing is with, with <laughs> three siblings, so my sister's in Halifax, and then my brother's in Victoria, and then I'm in Vancouver. So whenever we call the check-in or just say, hey, how's it going? And she asked, like, what did we do today? We'll be like, oh, yeah, we went for a run or we were down by the ocean. And she, she'll she hang up on us a couple times and she goes, no, I'm not <laughs> you know. why aren't you taking care of me? Bring me back to the warmth. This <laughs> so it, it's like puff love, but in the best way possible that that's fair that's fair i know that you've been around canada um especially you've been com com going from the east and now completely to the west because you, yeah. you were born in ontario right born and raised so yeah i was in ontario till i was 13 and then i was in calgary until i was 26 so it's like that 50 50 split and now i've been in vancouver i think what is it it's january so it's three or four months now i think this is month four and of course, you're loving it. I mean, Vancouver can be rainy, but well, I like rainy days. Do you like rainy days? I don't mind the rainy days. As long as I have sunshine and it's not like a cold rain, I can manage it. But I just think back being in Calgary in minus 20 something and it's just so cold, it hurts to breathe. And I go, no, I, I can manage the rain. It's fine. I have rain jackets. I'm fine. I think I like the rain too. Um, if it's too cold, of course, I don't like it either. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to get my Canadian jeans. Uh, like, come to mm -hmm. me, come to me. <laughs> I don't think it no. me. I don't think like my like, I told you, my family's been here for five generations. It's still too cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and talking about that, Matea, where where mm -hmm. is let's say your jeans, that heritage? Where, where is that heritage coming from? So my dad's side is a 50-50 split between English and Scottish. And then my mom's side we refer to as being something like Heinz 57 with there's like 57 ingredients. So it's predominantly Eastern European, um, very UK. Um, 
We found out, ironically and weirdly enough, because when I was modeling, everyone goes, you photograph as if you're Asian, are you sure you don't have Asian in you? So when my grandmother got DNA tested, we found out that we do have some Asian in us, specifically from India. So predominantly European through and through, but there's 1% Southern Indian on my grandma's side, which no one was ever expecting. Well, at least you, you realize, I mean, you, you were told that you had some, you know, Indian in you. And and yeah, that's that's one of the greatest things about Canada. You can find so much diversity all around yourself. And it's 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 great. It's that's awesome. But I thought you were going to say French because I know that you speak French, too. I also well, this is the thing. There is not French in my family, but when I was growing up in Ontario, it's actually mandatory for Ontario students in the public school system to take an hour of French a day, because obviously Canada is a bilingual country. But when I moved to Alberta, no one was speaking French, so I've lost quite a bit of my French. I can still understand when people speak, but I have a very Quebecois French. So speaking beautiful Parisian French is sometimes out of sight, out of mind. And I got torn apart at the international pageants for that when you were speaking to the French girls. Of yeah. course. But if you if you got in touch with people who spoke, who spoke the language, <laughs> of course, you would, you know, um, catch up and probably uh, grab the accent again. And it's it's different because you learned it when you were very little. Very little. I, yeah, I would have been 13 years ago. I was speaking. I was pretty much fluent. And then, you know, not many people speak French in Alberta. So True. it was a huge adjustment, but I'm so grateful. I can still understand a lot. If I'm watching a movie, I actually put it to um, French audio just to kind of re-stimulate that thought process because I'm going, I, I did a language for four years. Why wouldn't I try to keep it the best I could? So that's always fun. Yeah, and, and it's always good to, you know, have an idea of another language. You never know when you're going to Paris, especially if you're a model. Fingers crossed. Of I was more for like the pastries and the art, not for the modeling, because I'm way too short for that. You're, you're what? Um, for, for runway modeling, you have to be about 5'9", 5'10", especially in Paris, you have to be 5'9", or 5'10". And I'm a solid 5'7 and a half, so I would not cut it as a model in Paris. I would just go to eat the pastries and look at the art. Okay, now I can say I'm out of this world, like I'm completely stunned because when I see you on the stage, you look really tall. <laughs> it's, it's the legs. I think it's my legs. Well, That's yeah, that there. helps a lot. And the big hair. Hmm. Now oh. you guys see that I'm jealous about something else other than Vancouver <laughs> weather. <laughs> now, Matea, um, so you've been doing modeling. I know you have done many, many things. I know you've been a model, uh, pageant contestants for until at least that I know of 2019. Um, but you have also been a, an MC um, in, in various events, not just mm -hmm. one or two, but like a lot of them. Um, but you also, you have a bachelor in business administration. So how, so are you gonna tell us a formula for the 26 hour days or, or um, what? Coffee, lots of coffee at all times. There you go. <laughs> um, sleeping on planes when you have the chance. No, I, I think it's that I remember when I was working with Patty Faulkner, when she was my agent, she always told me make the most of each experience because it's going to be once in a lifetime. And whether you look at it as an absolute failure because you messed that up, that's ultimately up to you. But if you choose to look at it as a learning experience and what you're going to get out of it as a person with transferable skills or a different networking opportunity, that's so much more important. So whenever someone tries to reach out or give an opportunity, I try to jump at it right away. Obviously, I think about it and I go, well, is this in, my, in line with my core values? How does this benefit both parties? But what's the end goal with this? That's where the motivation comes from to try to do a 26 hour day. <laughs> that's yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I'm I'm glad that we're talking about this because I know there's many girls watching or there's going to be many girls watching and um, it's good that they know that they can be so many things in life as long as they want to, mm -hmm. right? And, and and because education, that's that's one question that I'm, I'm very curious about every time I talk to someone, especially when they're models, because in your case, you, you finished like you did um a, a career at school and you you've been doing modeling and you've been doing pageants so you, you can definitely do many many things in life how important is for you like how important is education specifically for matea oh um education is everything for me 
but I don't think it's just education in an academic sense. I think when you look at education, it needs to be a life experience. So for me, although I was a strong academic student, what was more important to me was the experience, the socialization, learning time management, learning relationships in university. Because once you get out into the world, which I've been doing for about a year now, I went, well, what did I actually learn from being in school since I was three years old to graduating? What did I actually do? I learned how to buy a textbook. I learned how to like raise my hand in class, but I didn't learn anything academically that I really applied to my life or when I started my business other than how to even balance my books. Like that wasn't something on my mind academically because I'm going, oh, I'll just have a normal nine to five because everyone expects that. But when you finally make the decision to go, your education comes from those life experiences. I think that's a switch that a lot of people need to flip, whether it's going to trade school, whether it's being an esthetician or being someone who works in transportation. The, the skills you learn with those interpersonal relationships in life, I think is much more of an educational state to be in than just academics. I'm not saying school isn't important. I, I loved my degree and it's so useful. But I also didn't want a degree that I wasn't going to be able to use. So I really thought about how to apply my academics to an actual life long term. Exactly. Because one thing that you learn at school is basically uh, specific skills about careers and yeah. how to apply it to, to a job or, mm -hmm. or any opportunities that, that you can probably envision. But mm -hmm. um, soft skills that people need for their everyday life and, and probably to get opportunities because you never know, right? Like you never know who you, you're talking to um, in, in a train station or um, probably at a cafe. You never know. So it's it's really important. It's 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 something that people should pay a lot of attention to. Like university will give you the degree and the knowledge of a career, but also how you basically manage yourself in life is going to give you the soft skills. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I think you gave the better pageant answer than I did on that, but... <laughs> Where do I get my crown? <laughs> I didn't bring mine with me. They're back home in Calgary, so you can have okay. them. <laughs> you gotta ship it, okay? You gotta ship it. <laughs> I'm gonna have I think my boyfriend would kill me if I had any more pageant stuff. Here. He's literally given me the whole closet for all my dresses, so... Yeah, you it's must have a lot of those. Yeah, he would kill me. He would really kill me. Or he'd <laughs> throw them off the balcony, probably. <laughs> I could just get an extra, you know, some extra room for another closet. No, I won't. That, that's, I wish that was the case. <laughs> um, paying rent, paying bills, global pandemic. Not practical. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> totally. Especially, I am i don't think that uh, costume that you were wearing for Miss Earth um, 2019, mm -hmm. that would fit in, in any closet. In, in, you know? Honestly, it could actually. It really, really? could. So, to kind of give you a backstory, I actually didn't get my national costume until 40 minutes till call time to be on stage. Oh my God. So it showed up in a um, giant plastic bag, which is not very like Miss Earth savvy. And my chaperones were going like, Canada, where's your national costume? You're supposed to have this like weeks ago. And I'm going, it's not up to me. Like I'm, it's, it's my team, I'm sorry. And I had four of our chaperones attempting to learn how to like assemble this giant intricate national costume and they're like where's the instruction manual and i'm like i wasn't given one so let's just wing it oh my god <laughs> but still it looked amazing like i gotta say and i want to talk about this specific topic later because i really want to talk about it it's something that when i saw it it blew my mind um but i i do want to talk about um because you did, you went to Miss Calgary, right? You, you did Miss Calgary once? I did, um, I did Michelle Wiswaldi's Miss World Alberta, where I was crowned Miss World Calgary. Oh, okay. So that was the precursor to thus becoming Miss Intercontinental Canada. So that was like my Miss Calgary time. And yeah. Miss Intercontinental was your second? Mm -hmm. It was my third international, third. but it was like my, one of my first really, really 
big mistitled. I think that's the appropriate way to word it. I feel like being Canada, you always have to be so politically correct. So I'm going, how do you rank the different pageants properly? It's, it's really confusing. If anyone could actually let us know, that'd be awesome because they change every year. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So the first one, which was the first pageant? So my very, 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 very first pageant was actually Miss Teen Calgary in 2011 through Patty Faulkner, which was about 30 girls um, at the Fairmont Palliser Hotel, which was gorgeous. And then I did Miss Teen, well, it would have been Miss Teen World, which is now Miss Teenage Canada. And um, Michelle saw something in me and she called me up and goes, how old are you? And I'm going, oh, I'm 18. She goes, do you want to go to Miss Teen Universe? And I said, well, how many days do I have? And she goes, you'd be flying to Managua in Nicaragua in 18 days. And I looked at her and I'm going, oh, it's middle of exam season in university because I went to university when I was 17. And she goes, well, like, take the time to figure it out. But we do need an, an answer in a couple days. So I ended up going there in 2014 where I was first runner up for Canada. And that was my first big pageant experience that I had no idea the caliber of the Latin American women or the women from Asia. It just it blew my mind. I then competed in America at International Junior Miss, which is very Americanized. I got to see Luciera, which was a dream. And then I went back to Michelle Wiswaldi's pageants for Miss World Alberta, where I became Miss World Calgary. And then we did Miss World Canada, which then became Miss Continental Canada. And then I did Miss Universe Canada. And a week later, I did Miss Earth Canada, which I then won in 2019 and went to Miss Earth three weeks later. And I just finished my second run at the Miss World Canada title three three months ago, I think. And now I'm home. It's, it's been a wild ride. It's been 10 years, which still blows my mind. Is there any other pageant on your horizon or? <sighs> I feel like we all want to say we retire, but how many pageant girls actually retire when we say we retire? It's, uh, it's really hard. It's hard. It's, it's an addiction. It's fully an addiction. And I always joke, right? If I see like a beautiful gown on Instagram or a new designer bringing something out, I feel like I have full pageant PTSD where I'm going, that could be my dress. <laughs> It never goes away, right? <laughs> it never goes away, but being in that environment of like women, I, I can't think of another environment where you have such academically achieving women who believe in community, who believe in that there doesn't have to be a compromise between intelligence and physical beauty, because so many people are told you can either be smart or you can be beautiful. There hasn't been a compromise. So being in that environment, it's just, it's so intoxicating because you see those relationships really build. Like my closest girlfriends live in Australia, South Africa, England, Philippines, and um, Puerto Rico. So for me, I'm going, oh yeah, like my girlfriends in the Netherlands, I can call them in three seconds, but having normal friends isn't normal anymore. Like those connections from pageantry really, if you talk to any of the women, you know this, they, they, literally your lifelong friends and it sounds so cliche but it really is true so i it's feel a, like it's a big sisterhood it's ever. so important it, it's really i think men always talk about networking and business i can confidently say i could call up any girl that i've competed with and say hey i'm coming to your country to launch a business do you have relationships with other government officials or people in this industry that could help me? And without a doubt, there'd be no questions asked. So for me, I actually look at pageants as a business opportunity, not just a sisterhood, which is kind of unique. Because I think a lot of people look at it as an experience. I look at it as a business. Yeah, and, and it takes you in, in many, many, um, in, in, in a lot of, I would say, capacities to to different levels depending on how you're orientated of course like everybody i guess has a different point of view when they do pageants or modeling or acting mm -hmm. or anything that they do right so it's it's a very positive way to see it and i think it's beneficial for many people as well mm -hmm. not only for for the pageant woman right mm -hmm. for the for the ladies mm -hmm. so yeah it's um so matea because when i saw I remember it mm -hmm. for Miss Earth Canada 2019. Yeah. I was going to, through the social media and I think those guys did an amazing job. Like they, they really managed the pageant very well. Yeah. Um, I think it was Herlick, right? Not Herlick. Herlick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he did a fantastic job, I think from beginning to end. And I started seeing the contestants. I was like, oh, this is beautiful. 
oh, mm -hmm. this is pretty cool too. This one too. And I'm like, okay, so what's the point? <laughs> I mean, it was like, who's going to win? I mean, I, I don't see... It was, it was anyone's game. And that sounds so stupid to say, but I remember looking at this and I'm going, well, she's representing Canada interna internationally on this grant. Obviously, you're Natalie Allen, which I love her to bits. And then I'm going, and then you've got these beautiful girls coming in, like Alexandria. And then you've got Jean, who's like a Philippines, like Miss Miss Philippines Fire. And then you've got all these other girls who are like in the Filipino pageant industry. And I'm going, <laughs> what do you want? Do I quit or what? <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend I know what's going on. So, so you felt like at some point you felt the competition. I'm not talking about how they behaved in the pageant, mm -hmm. but you know, there's it's a competition, right? Oh, and and mm -hmm. as I tell other girls that I'm interviewing, it's nobody goes with the mindset of losing. Everybody oh. goes with the mindset of I'm gonna win. I'm gonna oh, win. I'm gonna win a hundred percent. I told exactly. so. <laughs> Yeah. But then you get to see all these women, and then the worst part is that you talk to them and they're wonderful, and you're like, I hate this. It's just, I don't want to be your friend, but I love you so much that you're a good person, and you're beautiful, and you're accomplished. And you're going, great. So that's a big question mark. And then yeah. you ask yourself, so in that moment, mm -hmm. uh, and this is an option for you, you don't have to do it, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's something positive. Um, to recognize, right? When mm -hmm. when there is good contestants, I think oh, um, when you're a good contestant, part of, part of being it is that you recognize that there is also people around you that they are doing a great job. Can you tell me names, or if you don't want to say names, don't say them. But mm -hmm. any like a number of contestants that you said, woo, these are the ones to beat. Oh, I don't. Okay, so for Miss Earth Canada, I felt. I was in a position where I'd just come from Miss Universe Canada and it was the first time I hadn't placed and I'm going, okay, well, there's this opportunity that's in my hometown, well, why not just go for it? It's right there. So doing Miss Earth Canada, I was, I was exhausted and I just went in with the mentality of I'm either going to do my best and I'm going to be the best version of myself and if a girl outperforms me, more credit to her because I have the utmost respect when that happens. Um, it wasn't so much Miss Earth Canada where I had that mentality, but when I was at Miss Earth, um, there was a disaster with my flight information. I had nowhere to stay when I got there. It was, everything happens for a reason. But I remember walking into um, Carousel Productions Mansion and Imani Davis, who was the Miss Earth USA contestant that year who was first runner up was my roommate because we were rooming myself, Netherlands, Australia, and USA. And I remember looking at her and I'm going, You were Miss Georgia, USA. The year Deshauna Barber won. Do you know how much I'm fangirling right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. But between her and then um, Nellie, who ended up winning Miss Earth, she walked into the mansion after a press day and I just looked at her and I'm like, Okay. It's a vacation. It's a beach vacation. I'm fully on terms. You are beautiful. You are kind. You are well-spoken. You're charismatic. If you don't get crowned, and I, I said it from day one, if Nellie did not get crowned from Puerto Rico, there was something wrong because she was just such a genuinely strong, confident woman, but she had integrity. And for me, that was so amazing to see. I've, I've seen it at a couple pageants where you see the win, winner from day one or you see the top three girls from day one and you go, I want to be upset that I know I'm not going to win, but I'm so happy with the quality of the woman in which who is going to be representing our class of whatever year that I'm just so grateful. So there have been several of those moments. Yeah. And it's, it's actually very, um, it has a lot of merit because um, as you mentioned, you, you just finished Miss Universe Canada and then you went almost immediately to, to Miss Earth Canada. And okay. then you went to Miss Earth, almost immediately. Yeah, three, three pageants in the span of less than a month. Yeah, it was and, quick. Yeah, and, and, and the reason I'm asking is because I know that you guys, when, when you go to a pageant, and um, obviously the winner is super happy and she is living her dream, right? Mm -hmm. But 
from first runner up and, and the rest of the girls there's there's some kind of you know heavy heart because i wanted to win and and you have to live that for some people few days few weeks and few or few months but you 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 went to to miss earth mm -hmm. like you went on to participate on miss uh, miss earth canada having all that like probably you yeah. you said okay i'm gonna be miss universe canada that didn't happen and you still go to the other pageant mm -hmm. and you have the best attitude and of course you end up winning it was it was really a high for me to i knew 90 percent of the women i was competing with at miss earth canada it was a very intimate setting for me which i was, I was very blessed with and I remember standing there with Jasmine as I was top two, and Jasmine was actually my roommate for the whole day, the whole week, which was even so much better for me. Um, but I remember winning, and um, Natalie Allen and I had been like really, really, really close since we did Miss World Canada, and obviously she was Miss Grand Canada the year I was Intercontinental, so we had, we have a very special bond there. And I remember just looking at her, and I just started to cry because it felt this weight had just finally been lifted and she goes, you deserve this, enjoy. So to have that type of respect for one another, I think you get to a certain point in the industry where you have so much respect for certain women who have not only paid their dues, but who you see genuinely in the moment are grateful for the opportunity. It's, it's really such a blessing and it's such a special moment. You can literally see Natalie, like her arms, like right out in several of the photos. And I just, I'm so blessed for that because she was just such a genuine person in that moment between her and Jasmine. I was, I was over the moon. I'm going, I don't know what's going on. This is great. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's, I, I, I've uh, known Natalie for, for a long time. She's a sweetheart. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't know Jasmine. I just saw her there and I was like, okay, I, I don't know many of the girls. I know Jean um, okay. and Natalie. I know mm -hmm. Jean from like from 2014 or so. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was, I remember I was sitting in, in the audience and I was like, I, I I had something else to do. I was like, I'm not leaving because the pageant extended. I was like, I gotta go, but no, I'm not leaving until I see the final results. And I'm like, come on, I gotta leave. I gotta. Leave. I want to see who's gonna win this. Long, it and was then, a long production. Yeah, and I was like, man, I gotta go. I really have to go. And then I, I when I see you all, when I saw you all on the stage, I was like, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Like anything can happen. There is few moments that I can tell you, Matea, that there is a pageant or that I can uh, be in a pageant where you see that all the girls, like any of them, can be the mm -hmm. winner. And because there is a strong competition, like it there were so fun. many good contestants. And it, I was was, like, it, was, it was a unique dynamic where all the women had different strengths, whether it was styling, body, personality, stage presence. Um, you were there, you know I cannot dance. And I'm just thinking in my head, please don't make me dance. Please don't make me dance. Put me in the back the whole time. But all the women knew how to speak. All the women knew how to present themselves. Everyone knew how to style themselves properly. And I'm going, I've never seen that in a pageant before. Even internationally, it's a different mindset, but the way that we all got along too, it was really special because we were all helping one another backstage. And I find that's a very unique situation because usually people have their teams of people or you have your director with you at an international level and it was very much we were all there to support each other um when um alexandria walked out in that beautiful white ball gown i just remember going okay i want to i want to kick your butt because i want to win but let me like flare out your train as you walk out because it's the right thing to do and i would hope someone would do that for me so it was it was a really really special pageant yeah, and, and, and as I said, it, it was really competitive. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Miss Universe uh, pretty much. And well, you see the girls on the stage and you can say, well, probably these ones are the best one this year. But it was really hard in, in your pageant. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here because it's it's a really tough competition. But of mm -hmm. course, someone has to win. Someone has or meets all the requirements mm -hmm. that the organization and the international pageant is looking for. Because many people don't know this. When they give the results of a pageant, so of course, your friends, your family are going to mm -hmm. be happy. But the friends and families of 
the other girls are probably gonna say, well, um, something wrong happened, this was rigged or something. So ladies and gentlemen, what happens with the judging, so there is a panel of judges, yeah. okay? And these people are told pretty much what the organization is looking for. Mm -hmm. But these are the people who make the decision and they have nothing to do with the organization. It's like sometimes they're picked by some mm -hmm. people that e even the organizers don't know they're going to be there. And that's part of the transparency of the pageant, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's a fair decision. It happened for a reason, as you said. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, Matea, at the moment, that there is only five girls on the stage, or, or five or four? I there were five of us. Five, right? There were five because there was three elemental titles along with myself, and then um, Alexandria won um, another additional title because all of the girls went to compete internationally that year. So there was a top five. I do believe there's a top five because there were only eight of us actually, eight or nine of us. I think that's how it went. It's been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's probably yeah. I, I I should have searched before, but I think yeah, it was either four or five. It was myself, Jasmine, um, Alexandria, Jean, and Tiffany. So there were five of us. Yeah. Okay. So in that moment, mm -hmm. the call the fourth runner-up mm -hmm. and you're not you're I not cold say, I, I can say this openly i thought she was gonna win i thought she was gonna win so when she called the fourth runner-up i'm going are you sure <laughs> <laughs> no don't say it don't worry <laughs> okay so they call the fourth runner-up and it's another name it's lady a yeah. and then they don't call your name yeah. Third runner up, still no Matei around. Mm -hmm. Second runner up. I was and you still up. cannot hear your name. I just remember thinking, don't you dare say my name. Don't you dare say my name. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <they heard> you. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so there's just you and Jasmine in yeah. that moment holding hands, probably looking at each other. I'm yeah. pretty sure in that moment you feel the pressure on your shoulders mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people expecting your name like your people are expecting your name to be called as miss earth canada my people was just alessandra that was my people my whole family wasn't there it was just my boyfriend okay your boyfriend my boy <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm pretty sure because i don't know if they actually broadcasted it on on the social media which i probably think they did, did because yeah. they those guys are, are really big in, in production. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they were probably watching you. Let's think they were. Mm -hmm. They were watching you. They actually weren't. <laughs> okay, I tried to fix it, but okay. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, um, my jewelry sponsor um, from Fifth Avenue Collection down in um, Georgia, she is out of Georgia, she called my mom at two in the morning from Georgia to let my mom know I'd won Miss Earth Canada before oh, I could. Seriously? So that's how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, well, at least you, you got the crown, right? You got the yeah. crown. So it's, it was like, okay, I'm walking out of here with my crown and my sash and my boyfriend and that that's pretty much it. But at least you had that emotional support, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so Matea, mm -hmm. holding hands, yeah. Uh, waiting for a name. I know they took so long because I, can, I think I can remember that. They took so long to mention the first runner up. Mm -hmm. And they said, first runner up is Jasmine. What was the first thing that went through your mind? It wasn't even that moment. It was when I was first runner up at Team Universe. Because my mom did watch that. She goes, Matea, don't you dare look down. The winner always looks up. I don't know where she got this theory from, but I had this voice in my head going, Matea, don't you dare look down. You better have your chin pointing up. Don't you dare look down when you're holding Jasmine's hands or you're going to lose, which is not a rational thought process whatsoever. But when they called Jasmine and I, and I won, I just remember thinking, so <laughs> go eat McDonald's or Tim Horton. Because now I have to go to the Philippines, which is like an episode of pageantry. <laughs> And I just Let's do it the Canadian way. Let's go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> I, I always go to Tim Hortons. Um, but it was just that moment of this actually happened. 
I was truly myself. I listened to my gut instincts on what I wanted to wear, on how I wanted to present myself, what I wanted to say in my interview. Um, with five days of decision making between literally flying home from Miss Universe Canada to walking into the hotel of Miss Earth Canada and going, whatever happens is going to happen for a specific reason. I don't know what that reason is. And looking back, there was a much grander purpose to all of this. But it was, I think it was the closure I needed to go, it's okay to be you in the moment and different day, different judges, different girl. Be because when you looked at the women on that stage, every girl knew how to walk. Every girl knew how to speak. There wasn't a dress I didn't like and that's very rare to say at a pageant. It was, it was a very special environment. And, and I think you were all wearing white, yes. weren't you? Yeah, I remember um, that. We all were asked to bring a white gown for finale for top five. Um, I wasn't made aware of this until like the day before the finale. So I had my mom drop off my white gown that I actually wore at Miss Intercontinental Canada um, as a backup just in case. Um, so yeah, everything happens for a reason. And I know that sounds weird, but I truly believe it. And it was, it was something that um, before good things happen, sometimes it is really difficult. Like things get difficult, and sometimes yeah. when things seem so easy, you don't finally see that things happen. But of course, you have to be positive mm -hmm. all the time. And 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 I remember that day, I I was there and I was talking to Natalie, and I had to leave. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I I still wanted to talk to Matea. I wanted mm -hmm. to talk to Jean because I know Jean from mm -hmm. a long time ago. I had to leave, so I don't know what happened after. It was, it was really quick. Um, so we all did our photos, everyone took photos, obviously pre-COVID, everyone was allowed to hug and be happy and be merry. Um, I remember walking off stage, because all of our stuff was backstage, and we had the, the tiniest little stage, but it was beautiful. And I remember thinking, I don't know how my boyfriend's going to carry my gowns, because I have I have two awards because I, I won the overall title and Harlick did the most beautiful glass momentum trophies I've ever seen. So we had two of those because I also won best in interview. I had my sash, I had my crown. I brought three dresses in case there was like a malfunction on one of them, plus all my hair stuff, all my makeup supplies, my day wear for the day, multiple shoes. I always bring like a mini first aid kit and I just thought, I'm so happy he's Mr. World Canada because if this was any other boyfriend, he wouldn't have no idea what's going on. I was very lucky. <laughs> so, and, and that's 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 a key feature, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, a key factor, sorry, um, mm -hmm. because he understands what's going on and how mm -hmm. he would be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. Like how he would, what would be the best way to support you? He, he would for sure know that. Depends on the day. I think like I'm going to cough out and say he's also a 22 year old boy. Does he really know what's going on? No. Um, I'm happy he went to Mr. World because he has a bit of a sense of what pageantry is, but we also met because of pageants that very first day because he was the host of Miss World Canada the year that I was crowning my successor. So he's seen me from full no makeup in the morning at breakfast, jet lagged from Europe with laryngitis to being in a ball gown less than 12 hours later. So for him, he has seen the best and the worst of me so quickly in pageants, but he goes, she's always been Matea. And that's something I'm really grateful for is I've always stayed very authentic and you can literally hear how loud his voice is still. <laughs> this is this is spontaneous in life. Uh, it's almost it's life. So it's, it's real. <laughs> yeah, but I think having that moment of him being able to like help me carry my stuff and us have we had a team meeting because Harlick made the announcement that every woman on that stage for the first year of what was his Miss Earth Canada pageant would be representing Canada internationally in some capacity. So that was a really big moment for him to sit us down and go, look, these are the expectations. Um, Matteo, you're leaving in three weeks, get ready. Um, girls, you might actually be leaving before Matea, so please stay in that pageant mindset so you're prepared for an international. Yeah. There's many girls watching um, mm -hmm. this and this interview, and um, some of them have the illusion to go to pageants. I know something happened. Um, 
with uh, previous Miss Earth Canada, probably 2017. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think I, I met her because in, in my pageant she was there. You were there. You were the yeah. MC. I was I was supposed to be your judge, and then something fell through with an MC, and you guys said, "Well, who can MC a pageant?" And I was nominated. I guess I don't know the thought process. I met the judges and you that day because the production was being taken care of by something by another mm -hmm. company. I was like, "Oh, I know Matea, and I know Bernardo because he is, you know, from the Venezuelan mm -hmm. community, so I I I, I knew him." I was like, oh, this is nice. So they they know what they're doing, and it was a very good uh, announcement that you did. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, so um, things happen, right? Like mm -hmm. things happen. Sometimes girls feel like they really want to do this. See what happened this year. Um, was your year last year? Was it fine? Mm -hmm. I think this is the thing, no, no matter what industry you're in, especially being in the entertainment industry, things are always going to happen whether people speak about it or they don't. It is up to the individual to disclose what they wish to disclose for their circumstance. Um, because Miss Earth Canada the year before me was so outspoken about things, and she is a very good friend of mine, I was in a position where I'm going, well, I do have a background in marketing, I'd always done my own PR management and my own marketing, so I knew kind of how to navigate these questions and I'm going realistically there are always going to be politics in whatever you do and I wanted to be in a position where I'm going I really hoped and prayed the politics wouldn't come into play for me as Matea as a Miss Canada but realistically I went my goal is not the place at Miss Earth because that's an unrealistic goal especially with what just happened so my presence was more about Kind of, I call it a humanitarian initiative where I went in to rehabilitate Canada, Canada's reputation, but still hold our strength and integrity. So whenever we had a press conference, whenever we had interviews with press, I was consistently bombarded with questions about what had happened the prior year. And I blatantly said to each their own, and I'm so grateful in Canada, we have freedom of speech. That being said, I think the bigger conversation we need to have right now is on freshwater conservation. So I really navigated it back to my platform because as much as it is, as it is an important topic to talk about as women in this industry, because it's a, it's a women empowered industry, I wanted to give Canada an honest shot the next year as well to bring forward her issues to the table and be a competitor. So being able to talk about my platform, I had a ton of media on me and I'm going, I want to leverage this for the right reasons and not just talk about the past. I want to be able to progressively move forward as a woman, as Miss Canada and Matea. I don't want to have my reputation as Matea to consistently be talking about the past. So it was, right. it was, it was really tricky. Yeah, and, and the reason I'm asking again is because um, this happened in Venezuela, like it, it happened mm -hmm. back home. Um, there was a lot of rumors about and, and blackmailing and things that were not proven yeah. at any point. And this caused that many girls back home, they decided not to participate anymore. And it was really hard for the new organization to, to get, you know, girls coming. Like before you would get a casting of a thousand girls yeah. and they struggled to find 24. Oh my goodness. So at some point when things like those or like that happen, the girls feel like, okay, I'm not too sure about doing this, but still, mm. um, there's many women still doing pageants because it's, it's, a, I, I was um, national director, I'm a pageant coach, and I think it's a beautiful industry. I think it's mm -hmm. full of great things. And I think there's people who do a positive difference, mm -hmm. people who do a negative difference. I but, um, okay, so there's many girls watching. What could you tell them about, you know, pageants, your experience, what they would expect or what they should look for in a pageant? I think the first thing I'm going to say, no matter what you choose to do, whether it's academics, sports, um, your professional career, 
Look at something that you actually want to invest your time in, and that is a representation of who you are. As Matea, I went, I can confidently say I'm happy to do Miss Universe because I truly believe in being confidently beautiful in your own skin. When it comes to Miss World with Beauty with a Purpose, I think I fit that mold as well because I really believe in the platform and the advocacies I've worked with and the projects that I've been part of. Miss Earth was about beauty for a cause, which comes down to your your environmental practices. And being from Alberta, I'm going going, the Rocky Mountains are in my backyard, how can I not appreciate this? So for pageantry in particular, make sure you do your research on what franchise best represents you as well, because realistically, if you are under five foot, I think it's under five foot six, you can't qualify for Miss Earth. So why would you try to be Miss Earth Canada if you don't make the requirements or you don't represent what the brand is looking for because you're not going to be the product. This is my business background. You're not going to be the product the directors are looking for to sell to the organization in a way saying, hey, we've got a great product. Why don't you make her your next level up of production or your winner? So doing your research on what franchise is a best fit for you, I think that's a great first step. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to past national title holders or regional title holders because they know it. They've been there. They've done it. They are that person right now. So they have the inside scoop because if you were to speak to um, a good example, like Miss Universe 2005, Natalie Glavova as Miss Universe Canada, she may have a very different experience than Nova Stevens right now because they're so far apart in the franchise. You need to do your research and this is my business going, you need to understand the brand, but also the direction in which the organization is going, because if you don't fit it, why would they invest in you? Even if you want to invest in them, it sounds exactly. hard. It's a reality. It's a business pageantry is a business. And although you get a beautiful experience out of it, if you choose to make it an experience, but it's also having the right mindset and reframing that mindset to go it's not just about winning or losing it's about those little micro movements of going i'm gonna do a full turn this year or i'm gonna conquer walking down a flight of stairs in an evening gown that i'm so proud to wear or i'm gonna confidently be able to literally spit out my platform no questions asked whether it's for a b-roll for an interview for my interview with the judges or being able to speak to other women so I think having those micro goals, but also knowing your branding and how it aligns with the organization is so important. And especially because it makes it more genuine. If mm -hmm. you go to a pageant, which advocacy you believe in or yeah. you support from your heart, then it's gonna look more genuine and you will probably do better at that mm -hmm. pageant. That's okay, That's that sounds, that sounds fair. So Matea, mm -hmm. um, I want to know what you're doing right now. Like, is, is there any projects or future projects that you want to probably let people know about? Um, I launched my own business actually after coming home from Miss Earth because I couldn't get a job apparently. Um, so I do run my own digital marketing content strategy. I focus on storytelling, personal branding, lookbooks, um, social media strategy. So I've literally just been doing that in Vancouver the, for the past three, four months. Um, but I really just want to focus on growing my business, growing my brand, really, I don't want to say sh like sharing my story, but allowing other people to use my platform to further their businesses as well. So that's the plan right now. Um, I feel like with COVID, no one really knows what's going on. So I'm trying to set like smaller goals for myself that are more achievable than just saying, I want to take over the world at 26. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And especially, I know that you have a, a, a blog, like a video blog too, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's about, um, I'll let you, I'll let you explain it. Yeah. So um, what I ended up doing was um, I met a woman who actually used to work for um, a very specific um, franchise. And she goes, Matea, you need to start documenting your time as Miss Canada because so many girls don't know what it's like to be in this Canada and there's no pageant archive of information within a Canadian context. And hearing that kind of 
thought process that kind of like spun around in my head. I'm going, well, if I document my time being a Miss Canada, it could really inspire the Canadian industry to have greater inclusion, have greater resources at our capability because we don't have the infrastructure, for example, that Venezuela would have when it comes to pageantry. So if you have random little old Matea from Calgary and Ontario who comes from like a normal family, is a full-time university student, able to do all these things, why wouldn't other women be just as capable, if not more capable, to do the same thing? So I started that YouTube channel in 2017. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just kind of, I don't expect to make money off of it. I just wanted to share that story because if you have a girl that you're coaching, you're going to tell her, go Google the organization, go look up different past winners, do your research. And there wasn't that research accessible in Canada from my knowledge prior. So I wanted to be that space where women could go, okay, Matea's sharing how she got this um, headshot opportunity or how she got this networking spot done or how she gets continued sponsorship. Why don't I go check out what she's doing, take it and make it my own so that I can do what she does, if not do it better. So that was kind of the mindset behind that. That's that's awesome. And that's pretty much what uh, contestants and pageant contestants and winners do. Mm -hmm. They basically want to support. They want to pump uh, probably a charity, their advocacies and bring them to the next level, which is pretty much what you what you're doing right now. I try. I really try. Sometimes it's, it goes completely not to plan, but those are the best lessons I can learn, really. Nice. That's that's mm -hmm. awesome. And I know that you've been doing a great job since like a long time ago. Um, and I, yeah, I've seen or I've been present in so many events where you have been an MC or a contestant and everything has been like high, like top notch level. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be or continue to to be to do it if you continue to do it. Or, yeah. um, you know, serving as an example to other girls who are going into pageant industry or they're thinking about doing it in mm -hmm. the future. So, um, yeah, I want to congratulate you for all that you have done, mm -hmm. Matea. Um, I have to, to say goodbye for the moment, but it was really, really nice to have you here on my show. I hope it's not the last time. I hope um, not. It's going to be an honor to, to have you here again, especially because of the message you're spreading to, to other oh, girls yeah. around, like in the world that they're probably thinking about doing the same, right? So thank you very much, Matea. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching our show. And this was Angelo and Matea Henderson, Miss Earth Canada 2019. See you on the next episode at Backstage with Angelo. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.